this is the fourth try. Um, I have just turned on my soft light, my soft box. The lighting might not be the best. It is December here where I'm filming right now. It is December right now everywhere. But um, yes, I am currently filming in December and as I am in Latvia, it's completely dark already at like 3 p.m. So I hope besides the lighting that this video will still be valuable and that this video still will be uh, somewhat okay. Hello, my name is Ella, welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to discuss the different paths of Wicca. Now you might have already started your research or even your path in Wicca. You might have already started setting up your altar. You might have already started your book of shadows, but you might not quite know which path you should follow. So let's start with the basics. Now we will start with Gardnerian Wicca. Gardnerian Wicca was founded by Gerald Gardner, who is often and commonly known as the founding father of Wicca. Whether that may be true or not, he definitely is responsible for publicizing and heavily contributing contributing to Wicca as we know it today. Gardnerian Wicca is a very traditional path which is coven based. A coven consists of 13 members and the only way to get into such a coven is by initiation of another member. That means that you are able to trace back your ancestry let's call it like that, um, all the way back to the original Gardnerian coven. There also is a hierarchy system. So you have three stages. You have the initiation, then you would have the second stage where you already have a little bit of knowledge, <laughs> and then you would be moving on to the high priestess or high priest stage. So a Gardnerian coven, as I just said, has a hierarchy system and it has leaders. So we would have the high priestess, followed by the high priest. Now the high priestess and the high priest would be leading, for example, rituals and would also symbolize the god and goddess during one of these rituals. This follows, of course, the wheel of the year and the sabbat. These, of course, symbolize the rebirth of the sun god and the eternal life of the goddess. This path is very secretive and some would also say strict. So you would have a book of shadows that you would adhere to, that you would follow. And it is also not quite as easy to get into as I previously mentioned. You need to be initiated by a member, which means you need to know a member. But it was not very common for a Gardnerian member to be very public about themselves, which often meant that these covens were hereditary or simply just very, very secretive. Of course, that might not be the case anymore, especially nowadays. So while that is the traditional form of Gardnerian and Wicca, that might not apply anymore today. And you do not necessarily have to be part of a coven uh, if you still really like the Gardnerian belief system and you still want to follow it. You don't necessarily have to stick to these traditional rules. The next path is Alexandrian. Now, Alexandrian Wicca was founded by Alex Sanders and his wife, Maxine. Um, both of them were part of a Gardnerian coven. However, they slightly adjusted the Gardnerian path. So there are a lot of similarities between Alexandrian and Gardnerian. The differences often being Alexandrian wore more clothes during their rituals as Gardnerian was known to be sky clad or nude during rituals. Alexandrian covens also are not quite as secretive. However, we do still have a hierarchy system and we are still working with a god and a goddess deity. Alexandrian Wicca also includes or incorporates the Oak King and the Holy King. Now, these go back to the seasons of the year, in particular the lighter time of the year and the darker time of the year. Our next path is Dianic Wicca. Dianic Wicca is quite famous actually and a lot of people associate Dianic Wicca with just general Wicca um, because it is the feminist path. So as is the more feminist approach, traditionally speaking, there would be no men in a coven and it was very womanly oriented. So it was also a lot more community based or is a lot more community based. So while you do still have sabbats and esbats that you would be celebrating, you would not have a god or masculine 
uh, energy figure in your path. You would only have the goddess. You would also most likely be celebrating stages in a woman's life. Now, of course, once again, that is more traditional. However, the modern approach might be different and you would probably have men also in a coven. It is not completely exclusive to women most of the times anymore, at least. Um, that is just the very traditional approach. Our next path is CX Wicca, and I'm probably completely mispronouncing that, I apologize. So CX Wicca is founded by Raymond Buckland, and if you don't know who Raymond Buckland is, I highly suggest you look him up. He is an amazing author, and I highly recommend his book, uh, especially the complete book of witchcraft, or also known as the Big Blue Book. So CX Wicca is based on Anglo-Saxon witchcraft of Old England, especially around the 5th century, all the way to like 11th century approximately. Raymond Bugland did highly adapt this path to be more open, to be less secretive and possibly more inclusive, let's call it. So you did not have to be initiated by another member and you could in fact be self-dedicated. CX Wicca also incorporates the use of Freya and Woden as their deities. So once again we are back to feminine and masculine gods or goddesses. CX Wicca also has a focus or emphasis on studying herbology and different forms of divination. So for example tarot cards or runes. It is less strict, it is much more open and once again you do not have to be initiated by another member. You also do not have such a hierarchy system and the three-stage system as you would in Gardnerian Wicca. Instead the leaders of the coven would be voted for. Moving on to Solitary and Eclectic Wicca. Now I am grouping these together because I do believe that they go hand in hand quite often. So Solitary Wicca simply means that you are not part of a coven, instead you are practicing by yourself. Now this comes with pros and cons of course. Practicing in a coven is great because you're learning with other people, you have a community to fall back on and you often have someone who already is a little bit more advanced that can help you if you are struggling. Whereas the benefits of being solitary are that you don't have to take account of anyone else and you are free to do whatever you want in your own path. You do not have to go by the rules that are usually set by a coven. You also are learning by yourself, so that means you might be using books or you might be using YouTube to learn the Wiccan path. Now that leads me on to the eclectic path. Eclectic path basically is when you are creating your own version of Wicca. You might be choosing some parts or some aspects of a different path and combining them to create your own. You could even take different aspects of, for example, different religions or belief systems. So if you, for example, want to be an eclectic Wiccan but incorporate Hindu beliefs or even Christian beliefs, you are of course welcome to do so. Then you might have heard of different subcategories, I would probably call them, um, of these eclectic paths. So for example, you might have heard of kitchen witchcraft, green witchcraft, fairy witchcraft, celestial witchcraft, so on and so forth. Now these are a lot more modern and are essentially just labels that you go by yourself that means they're not for anyone else, they're just for you to clarify the area that you are specified in. So for example kitchen witchcraft, you might predominantly work in the kitchen for any of your spell work. So I myself might call myself a crystal witch or crystal wiccan, perhaps also cosmic witch or hedge witch. However, I simply go by the term eclectic wiccan just because it's simpler. So how do you find your path? My first advice would be to study all of the traditional paths. That means Gardnerian, Alexandrian, Dianic and Siax Wicca. I think it is important to study these traditional paths because they're the foundation, they're the basis. From then on you can move on to whichever path you prefer. It's like pizza, you can't start by the topics, you have to start with the basis. So these traditional paths will guide you and will teach you how to conduct rituals, how to create spell work, 
and what the basis of Wicca is essentially. So while you might not actually stay with one of these traditional paths, and there are of course more, I'm just naming the most famous ones here, you will most likely still incorporate these traditional aspects in your own path, even if you are completely self-made Wiccan basically. And the best way for you to find your path is to analyze what you already like, what you already have a thing for or a tendency for. Perhaps you already really are interested in Celtic Wicca, um, perhaps especially French and England, or perhaps you really have a connection to Nordic uh, witchcraft and paganism or Baltic, Slavic, whichever you find most interesting. Perhaps you have a special talent, perhaps you just have an interest. Maybe you like to work with herbs, or maybe you like to work with runes predominantly. These can give you an indication for what path you will be going on. Now, if you're completely new and you don't even know what you like or what you're good at, once again, I would refer you back to the traditional Wicca because then you kind of get to know these different aspects and get to know what you actually like. And of course, your path is completely up to you. You don't have to follow any of these paths if you don't like them. You can create your own and I would actually suggest you to make a list in your Book of Shadows with all of the beliefs and ideals that are important to you and things that you're good at and things that are interesting to you, perhaps hobbies that you already have. Uh, I suggest you write all of them down into your Book of Shadows and that way you get an overview of approximately the direction that you're heading into already anyway. And once again, with time you might be adding more to this list or taking things out of this list. So that actually already is the end of this video. I hope it was I hope it was. I hope it was somewhat helpful. Um, once again, I apologize for the light. I hope it's fine. I hope it's not completely terrible. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to support me and this channel, I do have a crystal and witch shop, which I'll be linking down below. You can also find me on Instagram and you can contact me there or in the comments if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Blessed be.